Someone came to see a John Lee with a problem one time. He said that his friends had found out that he was meditating. And so they said, so you say that your body is not yours. Why wouldn't you let us hit it? He didn't know how to answer. And John Lee's answer was, tell them it's borrowed goods, and I have to return it in good condition. But he could also have said, it's like borrowed money. I borrowed it to invest, and I haven't gotten my profit yet. What we're doing as we practice is trying to get a real profit out of the body, out of the movements of the mind, something of real value. Because your body, your feelings, your perceptions and thought constructs, even your consciousness, acts of consciousness, they come and they go. And you have to leave them at some point. And the question is, in taking care of these things, what do you have to show for them? Most people go for a life of sensual pleasures. nice sights, smells, taste, tactile sensations. Of course, these turn into nice nice memories. But then the memories, of course, are going to go too. And as for the pleasures themselves, as John Swight used to say, those sensual pleasures you had last week, where are they now? They're gone. There's nothing. What you may have left over is the karma that you engaged in in order to get those things, some, which sometimes may be okay and other times is not quite so okay. That's called borrowing money, investing it, and then losing. It's a double loss. So as you look around, you ask yourself, what really is there of solid value? We've got the mind. And you've got the qualities of the mind. And this is of solid value not only for you, but also for people around you. So you want to invest in those. These are some things to keep in mind as you're struggling with staying with the breath. It may seem like an awful lot of effort, but it's effort that's, well, worth the effort. Because there is a dividend, there is a reward that comes from it. At the very least, you're developing qualities of endurance, persistence, stick to a tividness. And even better when you begin to get a sense of well being with the breath. Even in the beginning, it's just for short periods of time, the fact that you're able to settle down. You show to yourself, okay, there's a well-being that comes from staying right here. Sense of ease, sense of fullness. And it causes no harm for anyone at all. And all that sense of ease may pass. You're actually developing a skill, which means that you've got access to a pleasure that's more under your control. And it's a pleasure that goes straight to the mind. It doesn't have to go through the eyes or the ears or the tongue. It's purely a mental pleasure. So it doesn't have to be filtered through the senses. This will be something really good as you find that the senses begin to go their various ways. As your eyes get blurry, your hearing gets bad, your sense of taste grows flat. As your body gets older, it gets more sensitive to heat and cold and other things outside. So as the senses wear down, you've got something good inside that doesn't have to depend on them. So 
somebody you can rely on as the body falls away. Because if you don't get something good out of the body, the fact that it's falling away, it's very sad. You had this opportunity, and there it goes, there it goes. And if all you can think about, there go my sensual pleasures, there's a real sense of loss. But if you can remind yourself, well, I have taken good things out of the body. I've made good use of it. I've gotten my profit. I invested it. Now I have to hand it back. And even though I'm handing it back aged, ill, dead, the original owners are not going to complain. Because you have something good to share with them. You have the merit that you've made. And this merit has an influence that goes beyond what you might ordinarily think. There's a goodness that you share with people around you and the fact that you're needing to feed on them less and less, and you're subjecting them less and less to your greed, aversion, and delusion. But there's also goodness for beings you can't see. John Fun one time was talking about how beings fill space in the same way that rice would fill a sack of rice, that stuff full of rice with no space for any extra grains. There are beings all over the place, high level, low level. And what they can sense from you is the quality of your heart. There are some low-level beings who are really hungry for some goodness to be spread their way. Well, when you meditate, you've got something good to spread to them. There are high-level beings that are happy to be around meditators. Because you're not sending out the heat of passion, aversion, and delusion. So the goodness that comes from meditation, that comes from getting the mind to settle down. And as you use that settled down mind in order to understand why you're suffering, how you can stop, so the mind gets lighter and lighter as you begin to peel away all, all of its attachments. You've got a real genuine profit there. Something, as they say in Thai, doesn't, if it falls into water, it doesn't float away. If it falls into fire, it doesn't burn. Something doesn't have to depend on the senses at all. And as you know, the, the Buddha's definition of the world is the six senses. This doesn't have to depend on the world in any way. You've got your own independent goodness. Something you can take with you, something you can share. So the fact that you've borrowed this body, you entered into your mother's womb, you saw it as an opportunity. Well, make the most of that opportunity. It doesn't last forever, but you've got it right now. And John Munn would often talk to his students. And they came from poor parts of Thailand generally at the bottom of the social ladder, but he kept reminding them, you've got everything it takes, all the basic requisites for putting an end to the mind suffering, for doing something of really solid value. Much better than trying to go out and climb up the, the social ladder. Much better than anything else you could do as a human being. So we all have what it takes. But just make sure that you make the best use of it. You are dealing with borrowed goods here. You're going to have to pay back. If you can pay it back with merit, the people who lend it to you will be happy, and you yourself will have plenty of profit to take with you, something of really solid worth.